I'm going to talk about violence in the community and basically two things that can trigger it. And one of them is called triggers. Um, <coughs> the first thing I want to talk about is what we call perceptions based on partial knowledge. Okay, our perceptions are what they are. If I, and some of you have seen pictures like this, I can show this, I'll walk around with it so you all can get a better idea. And some of you are going to see one thing, and some of you are going to see another. Okay? Tell me what you see. See a young lady. You do. What do you see? An old lady. You see an old, old crone. Okay, how many of you saw an old crone with the nose and the chin? Okay. How many of you saw a lovely like, young lady with a hat and the, and the uh, feather uh, sticking out of her cap? Okay. All right. Perceptions, that's what we're talking about. We all have perceptions based oftentimes on partial knowledge. Now, those of you who have paper and pencil, I know the paper's there, but not everybody has the pencil. I'm going to put you through a little exercise uh, that I've done many, many times, not only with inmates, but with other people as well. Okay? Uh, now, you see on, on the board here, I have four columns, A, B, C, D, and then uh, A is marked 1 through 5, B is marked 1 through 4, and so on. And then you're going to add up the total, divide by the number 5 or 4, and give an average, okay, based on what I'm going to read you. Now, I have to tell you, this is a real person. I cannot tell you whether the person is male or female. Okay? And we're going to rate this person on what we would call a trustworthiness scale from 1 to 10. Based on what you're going to hear and how you average things out, and I'll lead you through it okay, you will see how trustworthy you would find this person to be. So those of you who can do this, let's do it, okay? Okay, we're going to look at column A. And as I read something about this person, I want you to rate this person 1 to 10, okay? All right, this person was arrested and thrown in jail in 2006. Give your rating. Okay, this person has been in trouble with the IRS. This person was nominated for several awards. This person was escorted off stage by police during a concert. This person is considered a good writer. Okay, add them up, divide by five, get your average. Let me know if I'm going too fast. Okay, are we ready for B? This person sometimes has hung out with drug dealers and prostitutes. This person has not always had a regular job. This person has suffered with severe depression. This person appeared with Jesse Jackson in his Rainbow Coalition in 1989. Add them up, divide by four, get your average. Okay, 
This person gives great parties. This person once punched someone in the mouth. This person cares little for money or material things. This person has been fingerprinted several times. This person has worked with AIDS patients. Add them up, divide by five. Okay, D. This person is considered pig-headed by some, very opinionated. This person claims to love children and animals. This person worked for Jimmy Carter's presidential campaign. This person has made a lot of trouble as a union activist. Okay? Total them. Take the average. Now, add up your averages and divide by four and see where you find this person on the trustworthiness scale. How many of you found this person trustworthy seven or better? Raise your hand. Nobody? How about between five and seven? Trustworthiness scale? Raise your hand if you found this person to fall within the five to seven scale. Below five, raise your hand. Okay. Uh, is this person male or female? Male. You want to give a name? You might think you might know who it is. It's not you, is it? Pardon? It's not you, is it? I can't hear you. It's not you, is it? <laughs> well, to make a long story short, it is me. Yeah. I didn't know. I, I did not mm -hmm. know. Good, good guess. Okay, yes. Everything that you heard, okay, was about me. But that's on, based on partial knowledge. If you knew the rest of the story behind some of these things, all right, for example, was arrested and thrown in jail 2006? Yeah, right, in Washington, D.C., because I came to the defense of an Iraq War veteran who wanted to march in the Independence Day Parade. And he was, he was in his fatigues, he was carrying a sign, support our troops, bring them home now. And I was on the sidewalk, because I'm a code pink woman, Women for Peace, and when I saw that, I lost it completely, because there was a struggle, he fell to the ground, and he got up and he tried to go back out into the street, and they surrounded him, handcuffed him, threw him in the paddy wagon. You can go on the internet, and if you, if you Google Chloe John Paul, somewhere along the line, among many other things, you're going to come up with a photograph of me with my fist up against a cop's chest because there was a struggle. I went out and I said, excuse me, sir, if you're going to arrest him, you're going to have to arrest me too. Ma'am, get back on the sidewalk. I said, excuse me, did you hear what I said? If you're going to arrest him, you're going to have to arrest me too. There is no way that young man is going to jail alone today. If he was good enough to go to Iraq to fight for our freedom, he's good enough to march in that parade. So there was a struggle, and they handcuffed me, and this young man and I spent a few hours in a holding cell together, <clears throat> and we got acquainted. I have no regrets about doing that whatsoever. So that's the story about getting arrested. Fingerprinted? Yeah, many times. As a teacher, 
you go to a new system, you have to be fingerprinted. Not to mention that I was fingerprinted, you know, in, in DC jail. Uh, okay. Uh, the other thing, because we're running short of time, and I knew that I wouldn't finish everything I wanted to finish, uh, I started saying something about, you know, what's being done in society today, particularly in the schools. Um, they talk about zero tolerance in certain school systems or three strikes in your ass. That's not working. It's not working. We have to begin with our youth, with our little ones, and uh, uh, some of the most stupid things that go on, for example, you may have heard of that little six-year-old kid in Delaware, a Cub Scout, he was so excited that his Cub Master had given them one of those three-way eating utensils that has a knife, a fork, and a spoon, and he brought it to school because he wanted to show his friends and use it at lunch. And he was kicked out of school, suspended, and threatened <coughs> with reform school. Well, you better believe that I called the superintendent of, of the Delaware School De District the next day, that after it was on the news, ex you know, expressing my displeasure with such a stupid thing. All right, uh, this this doesn't this should not happen to a six-year-old. So they agreed, you know, that uh, they had they had to change their tactics because I wasn't the only one complaining. And we have to be able and ready and willing to come to the defense of things that are, that are not quite right, all right? But I want, I want to be able, I, I want to be able to end with something personal. Okay, I started by asking the question, why is peace such a dirty word? It doesn't have to be, but peace has to begin with us. We have to create that inner peace within ourselves. And it, if we do, it will express itself to others. A wise Indian guru once said that man is a house with four rooms, the physical, the spiritual, the emotional, <coughs> the mental. The problem is, that he tends to spend most of his time in only one of those rooms, and it would be in his best interest to visit each of those rooms every day. Now for me personally, my day <coughs> begins on a spiritual note, and I value my serenity and my dignity more than anything in the world. And like I used to tell the guys, in prison, I said, you know, everything's been taken away from you, but you still have your dignity and your serenity. And the only way it'll be taken away from you is if you give it away, all right? And if you move about your, your day with that sense of dignity and serenity, you're going to come to know an inner peace and other people sense that in you, and they will approach you on a different note. And we have to also learn to listen. 